Last week, the US Supreme Court overthrew Roe v. Wade and pushed that decision over abortion back to the individual states. There are some important things to be said on all of this. Things that from where I'm sitting, almost nobody is actually saying in this period where almost everyone's giving hot takes. So let's jump straight in. Let's discuss abortion. Now, you might be thinking that right now, especially if you're in America, people are talking about little else following the overthrow of Roe v. Wade by the Supreme Court last week. From a distance, I'm not seeing that. With America's polarisation and the dominance of the extremes on both sides, this difficult and nuanced moral discussion has turned into two sets of mutually blind slogans that are being yelled across the chasm at each other. The difficult discussion of abortion involves key questions such as when does human life begin? What are the reasons that you might desire a termination that would be moral justification with the act of ending at least a potential life? How far do you encourage or discourage that act? Should the act even be legal? And so on and so on. And the important thing to note is that there are no answers to those questions, save for the ones that we provide. There's no scientific study that's going to happen in the future that is going to give us some definitive answer about when a human fetus becomes a human being, because it's definitional not biological. The question is, do we hold human life to be sacred? And what does that even mean if we say that we do? Or is our attitude to this now dictated purely by the selfish convenience of the living? And did we lose something important if we did indeed cross that line? So no, I'm not hearing many people having those discussions. When the UK passed its Abortion Act back in 1967, an action that gave it one of the more liberal laws in this area in the world, and which there is zero interest in UK society in overturning, that discussion did happen. There was a free vote in Parliament, meaning that members of Parliament were able to vote freely on their own conscience. Unlike the US, the political parties did not take formal positions. And that freed up the discussion to focus on those difficult moral questions, seeking a practical but morally defensible compromise. In the US, the polarisation means that nobody has the patience for such discussion and has no mood for compromise. Positions on abortion have become part and parcel of people's group identity. So on the one hand, you have the Republican right, which is a more religious identity than most that we have now in the modern world. They have the firm position that life is sacred, it begins at conception, and hence any and all abortion is killing human babies. I listen to a number of people that I hold to be good faith commentators on the right, and the strength and sincerity of that conviction is not in any doubt, in my view. And they do have a position that, unlike all of the things that the rest of us might end up with, that is wholly and logically defensible. Biologically, independent life starts at conception. If you hold that all human life is sacred, at least until you've used your free choice to do evil things, maybe, then it makes perfect sense that life begins from the actual beginning. Now, for the rest of us, we have to make a judgment. We say it becomes human life at 10 weeks or 18 weeks or 24 weeks, or once it becomes viable to survive outside the womb. Well, let's be clear. All of those are invented distinctions. We say, oh, at 17 weeks and six days, it is not a sacred human life. But one day later at 18 weeks or maybe 18 weeks and one day it has become so. And that, of course, is an arbitrary line, one that suits us to draw. Now, pragmatically, we need a line. But on that basis, the exact place we draw that line cannot be morally defended on any grounds, except that it's the best compromise we can agree on. It sounds like a huge flaw, but it's kind of not because it's all invented. There's no objectivity here. It all comes down to the values and judgments you choose to have as a society. Remember, there have been tribes in history 
that considered it not only acceptable, but moral and right to expose newborn infants on the mountain soon after birth. Life was so tough, so grindingly tough, it would be immoral to allow the weak into it. Such morality is shaped by your circumstances. Morality around sex and marriage has often, throughout history, been about the imperative of maintaining in-group cohesiveness in the face of difficult external environments. Well, we are now, for the time being at least, not in such a difficult practical environment. So our morality is not necessarily influenced by those sorts of factors. Does that mean it becomes irrelevant to any such decisions? That's a difficult call. The conversation in America is not difficult, however, as I said, because it has become about moral absolutes and those easily get turned into slogans. Shouting slogans at people, not that difficult. The intellectually coherent and moralistic absolutism on the anti-abortion position we've just covered, but then increasingly on the other side, the demotion of a discussion to the point where it's taken as trivial and the only question of interest is the bodily autonomy of the mother. And that has ended up with some states and some of the political advocates designating abortion as a right up to the point of birth. Now, the way people debate this issue is that it's black and white. You're either pro-choice or you're pro-life. A lot of the people who are supporting pro-choice from a distance, from outside, from Europe, see it in those terms because they're opting into the debate terms of reference as they're being set in America. But almost none of those societies would actually hold the idea of abortion in the final trimester as anything other than deeply immoral. From a distance, they don't notice that it's part of the discussion. They focus on what they hold to be the evil of outright bans on abortions, but they're apparently unaware or at least unbothered about the idea that some, a small minority for sure, but some are killing what we must surely concede are indeed unborn human beings. Only a few decades ago, Bill Clinton was saying that abortion should be safe, legal and rare. As a nation, our goal should be to protect individual freedom while fostering responsible decision making. An approach that seeks to protect the right to choose while reducing the number of abortions. Our vision should be of an America where abortion is safe and legal, but rare. And that was a reflection of the difficulty of the debate and very much how societies across the world have settled it in most places. It's something that circumstance means we should accept has to happen. Whilst not demonising anyone who makes that choice, it should never be an easy choice. It should always be made respectfully to the moral importance that it has. It should be a process that's encouraged to be a reflective one. But that safe, legal and rare position fell out of favour with Democrats in the 2010s. Suggesting it should be rare was particularly seen as outdated. You had groups calling themselves things like Shout Your Abortion, whose co-founder said this. Anyone who uses that phrase is operating from the assumption that abortion is a bad thing. The Democratic Party duly dropped the word rare from its platform in 2012. Hillary Clinton used the phrase in her 2008 election primary run. She was not using it by her 2016 run. And one step follows another. So soon you had high profile figures on the left starting to talk about abortion as something to be celebrated and people championing late term abortion in the most absolute terms, as though in so doing they were not making any kind of moral argument so much as they were seeking to provoke the other side. If that's what they were seeking to do, well, they certainly succeeded. That's a problem with polarisation, where people work their way to the extremes. In other societies, different parts of the world where this issue wasn't party politicised, people were able to discuss the issue from principles and to arrive at a difficult but necessary compromise. Where that line got drawn could be very different. In France, it got drawn at 14 weeks, which is the same or not so different to that which some states are putting forward in the US that is being held to be dreadful and restrictive by pro-choice advocates. 
Nobody notices while they're shouting absolutist slogans at each other. Much of the rest of the world doesn't support either extreme. The other argument that comes along with this debate is whether or not this is exclusively, quote, a woman's right to choose. The debate is framed in terms of deciding what does or doesn't happen with a woman's body. That position takes a classic moral dilemma where you're trading off the interests of one party against another, the woman, the things that she holds to be in her interests, versus the interest of the unborn child. At what point it becomes an entity that society feels should be represented in the decision, because it can't represent itself. It's convenient for women to disregard entirely the other party to the decision, so that their interests are the only ones that count, But that convenience doesn't make it morally correct. Discussions around morality and rights are often difficult because you're dealing with conflicting interests. Your right to do X conflicts with my freedoms or rights, hence we have to have a managed process, which may be a very difficult one, where the law sets bounds on those rights in the name of justice. The principle of law is that you do not have on a jury the people who have a material interest in one side or the other of the matter at hand. We recognise that's not fair because those people are likely to be biased on the side of their own interests. And yes, it is not only reasonable but important that society has an understanding of when it believes human life begins because we expect of the law that it will defend the interests of children. That decision doesn't get delegated solely to the very people who may have an interest in ending that life for their convenience. Only in a society that have concluded that at no point in its nine-month development is an unborn child to be counted as a human being would you come to that conclusion. This is where the slogans have always pushed past each other without any point of meeting. The slogan, my body, my choice, It's fine as long as you're dealing with an issue that only ever affects your body. I mean, I support the principle of my body, my choice. It's why I support the right of people to choose what medication they do or do not take. On a rather topical note. Even though they should be encouraged to reflect on the consequences of their choices and all of that. But at some point, of course, in this situation, it's not just your body. It's also the life of another human being. And you may wish to disregard that life as just a bundle of selves at the start of a process. But at some point, it makes the transition. And society has to make a decision about when that is held to take place. If the answer to that is to be never, not until the point of birth, then be aware that is on the standard of every other country that has made their decision in this space, bar Canada, an extraordinarily radical and arguably brutal position. I would argue that the fact this is not a live debate in the UK and a number of other countries is precisely because that final resolution was not on such an extreme position. Those societies may describe themselves as supporting the woman's right to choose, but de facto what they actually mean is they support the woman's right to choose up to a point. There is a line that gets drawn. The debate is where you draw the line. And that is legitimately a societal decision, not just one for women. We've seen that the majority can adapt to and live with the idea that abortion takes place relatively early. Those who are religious will choose not to do that themselves personally. They will regret that it happens at all, but they most will accept the compromise of the status quo. It may take time, but ultimately they will accept it. Those who might choose to have an abortion will mostly accept the constraints and the hurdles as appropriate for the gravity of the decision. But the position will never be settled so long as it resists on one of the two extreme ends. Ban abortions under any circumstances, then the absolutist waiting on behalf of one of the two parties' interests mean that it will constantly be seen as a deep injustice. Presented with an injustice, people will work tirelessly to overthrow it. The process of how abortion was eventually introduced into Ireland would make a case study on this. But equally, have a process that gives no moral value to the life of an unborn child at whatever point of development, treat it as not the moral and difficult choice a woman might make, but a frivolous choice, even a badge of honour, 
That will make the charge that you are killing babies in the name of an ideology a difficult one to refute. And people will campaign tirelessly to end what is seen to be a moral outrage. Neither of those positions will settle the debate. Only a nuanced and honest discussion arriving at a difficult and uncomfortable compromise has, in the modern world, provided an end point that holds, that gains support. Needless to say, this isn't the discussion people in America want to have at the moment. That's because they're not trying to solve the question. They're trying to win a civil war. It's a civil war that's being fought via the culture. It's very much what it is. In wars, people demonise the other side and they seek total victory where they can impose terms on the other side that that side has no choice but to accept. The last time America fought a civil war, it was over an issue, slavery, that was indeed one of moral absolutes. Slavery is not an issue where you can make messy compromises because ultimately humans are born equal and we now agree that previous human norms were holding some people in bondage. That is not acceptable. Full stop in the modern world. America is using abortion as one of its civil war issues and to do that both sides have had to imbue it with the same moral absolutism. As I said, the slogans have no point of connection with each other but the point is... That's by design. They take an issue where there's a clash of competing rights and they disregard one half of the conflict, asserting absolute victory to the remaining party. And that all feeds into what I think is the mistake that non-American people are making. They're seeing the issue in the same civil war terms as America, as a binary. The old terrible days were the days when abortion was banned, the new modern enlightened days are when it is freely permitted. Therefore, what's just happened in the US is going backwards. Progress reversed. That's not the dynamic. Not if the examples we see in different parts of the world are taken into the equation. Roe v. Wade was not good law because it permitted an extreme version of abortion up to the point of birth. It only permitted it. It didn't mandate it. It's not how it was practiced in a number of the states, but it was in some of the others. And the provocation of that meant that it was always going to remain a target. Because of the extreme polarity, the policy has lurched from that extreme right to the other extreme. And while we can and should focus on the real difficulties that will present for women whose lives are affected by this, at the short notice, by that lurch from one extreme to the other, the point is it's simply gone from one unbalanced state to another unbalanced state. The true modern solution, the one that settles and becomes relatively durable, is the position that establishes balance, respecting the profound moral character of the nature of this particular choice. Supporting abortion as a serious, not frivolous decision, taken early enough, that society can feel that it's on the right side of our, yes, entirely arbitrary line about what we feel might count as the sort of human being that deserves our protection. For some, that's not good enough. For others, that's way too much. But for the majority, once you've reached that point, they will accept the constraints and they will consider it settled. The polling in America confirms most of the population think there should be some restrictions. They don't support late-term abortions. Another question, of course, given how influential America is, particularly on other countries in the West, is whether this move unsettles the status quo in those other countries. And it may well might. My prediction is that it would only successfully disrupt countries where the policy is to some degree unbalanced. So those countries that currently live on either extreme, outright banning abortion on one side, or like Canada, supporting easy abortion, however late in term, on the other side, they would be the most vulnerable to that disruption. Countries where the balance is on the more restrictive end might also find that there's a renewed push against those restrictions. So Germany, maybe, which grudgingly permits abortion in the first trimester only, and then only then with mandatory counselling, and will otherwise put you in prison for three years. That might well find itself in the crosshairs. 
Those that have found the balance that mostly holds will not be attracted by the invitation to head back into the morass on this. And the UK certainly won't. I mean, there'll always be some campaigners here who take their lead from the US. I mean, to the point of absurdity, we've seen it during the George Floyd protests. We had protesters in the UK chanting, hands up, don't shoot at our unarmed police force like they were infants repeating things they'd heard adults say, not understanding what the words actually meant. Fine, I would expect to see some of that. But no, Roe v Wade is unlikely to upset the settlement in the UK because it has worked for many decades. It is not party politicised. Polls show overwhelming support for the status quo. Few members of parliament would want to have to deal with any sort of upset to that. Now, maybe longer term, all this is going to change. Maybe the increasing secularisation of our society means that we will value the convenience and needs of the living more and the sacredness of unborn human life less. I don't think so. At least not any time soon. The places where that would take us still provokes a significant human disgust reaction, regardless of whether people are religious or not. And that seems to me to have an evolutionary function. We're probably not going to wholly lose. In any case not in my lifetime. So where does this leave us and what happens next? For now, the US will be fighting this out state by state. And for now, and I hope for always personally, it will be fighting its civil war through the ballot box. States that are so-called purple states, where there's a closer balance between the political traditions, will probably be the most successful in retaining existing compromised legislation or steering new legislation in that direction. The other states are likely to frame extreme versions of their favoured position. That will motivate the other side to seek a federal level policy to ban those. In principle, the Republicans will be best placed to achieve that in the short term, depending on how much difference the Roe v Wade decision makes to the coming elections. Personally, I think it won't make that much difference. They are likely to recapture control of Congress. Now, almost certainly that doesn't then mean a nationwide ban. It's not in their political interest. It would hurt them in the swing states they most need. And they don't have a majority in support of it amongst their own ranks, probably for that very reason. Only a minority of Republicans in Congress have supported bills for full bans in the past. What they could do is to focus on those states with highly permissive laws. And we've seen this in their statements. So Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said this, We must work to continue to reject extreme policies that seek to allow late-term abortions. Various House Republican leaders have signalled they would back a nationwide ban on abortion after 15 weeks. Notice for framing there, we have countries like France that have legal abortion because it's permitted up to 15 weeks. Here it's presented as a ban from 15 weeks. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, around 93% of abortions in the US happen at or before week 13 of pregnancy. As I said, Americans are generally less supportive of abortion further into pregnancy, so maybe that is the foundation where a final settling will take place. But no Republican bill of that sort will require states to provide abortion up to 15 weeks, only to prevent states from providing it after that point. It'll only happen, if it happens at all, as a compromise between the two warring sides. And that will only happen when they fought their way to a stalemate. It could end up that the overthrow of Roe v Wade will turn out in retrospect to have been a good thing. It was a legal fudge. One of those things that people do when they have to navigate around a broken system. And it's unsatisfactory framing because of the fact that he was trying to make difficult law via the courts rather than via the political mechanism where it actually belongs meant the issue became polarised and politicised. Now it's going to be a period of conflict. That's natural. It's the nature of change that it only tends to come after a period of conflict. But it could be, could be, that as it plays itself out, the country will actually end up arriving at a better negotiated settlement as a result of having gone through that process. It's only going to get there by trying all the worst ways first, and it could easily destroy itself in the process. 
comes down to whether people will remember that when you fight a war, you should always have half an night of a sort of peace that you know you're going to have to build at the end. If you're saying that America, for whatever reason, could never settle for the balance that other countries have achieved in this area, then the logic of that position is the country splits. Because neither side will rest under a regime based on the other side's extremism. We're going to see that extremism in full force over the coming months as pro-life conservatives celebrate their win by overreaching. For example, Louisiana is advancing a bill that would allow prosecutors to treat abortions as homicides. That is civil war politics. Provocations, not sensible policy. In all other places, this issue is about healthcare and moral values. In America, it's framed as an existential political question. It's as well to understand the nature of the debate, especially if, like most people right now, you are inclined to take sides.